Hi, welcome back to the final tour, the final grand finale of our third HMO that we've been building here in Hampshire. These three HMOs, they're all small HMOs, so they're C3 to C4 conversions. That's up to six people. Two of them actually have, actually have the ability to get a seventh room. So once we've established this use for a few, few months, make sure there's no complaints to the neighbors, kept everyone happy, we'll put in that extra application for the seventh room. Hopefully we get it. If we don't, it'll be an extra recreational room or a breakout room, or a little lounge or dining room for the existing occupants for the six. But without further ado, let me show you around the third HMO. That's three in five months. It's not too bad. I would have liked to do it in maybe four months, but you know, a few delays, a few trades have let us down. Um, and when you're dealing with the smaller trades and you can't really justify full-time project managers on this kind of smaller size of site, um, occasionally delays slip in, but I'm okay with five months. I think that's amazing. We've got 18 rooms immediately on the market. Actually, it's been dripped over the last month or two because the first one was ready last month. Um, and now we've got a flood of tenants coming in. The first guy's moved in here already this week before we got a chance to film. Um, but you know, we managed to get a few clips on the iPhone, which we will cut in for you guys um, through this video. So without further ado, let me show you around. One of the first things to note, and excuse the squeezing in, I'm going to let you go in there. The last thing to be done is flooring in this, in this room. Now, if you remember, if you've seen previous update videos, this was just a downstairs toilet and the wall came across here. We've extended it back into the old utility room um, and it's allowed us to create a shower. So I'll let you we'll cut some incidentals as we walk around the house, but ultimately flooring is the last thing to go down in there, um, which is fantastic. We've got the integral garage. Pretty boring, no point in seeing in that, it's empty. Future planning app, extra bedroom, which will be great, an ensuite. Now this was the utility room I was talking about. It was double the size, had a few cupboards in it, but ultimately we don't need that space and we've now managed to stack the washer dryers and uh, we've created another ensuite. That would be a shared ensuite for people in the house. So really, really pleased with that. Coming on through to the communal areas now, we were um, you know, given this lovely, lovely brown kitchen um, it's not too offensive. I wouldn't have chosen it myself. You've seen our other HMOs. What we like is white gloss, gray gloss, more modern. But you know what? For the sake of saving five grand, maybe more, I'm really happy with this. We've got a lovely, good quality kind of Arga style, big oven, lots of ringed hobs. So this is great for a small HMO, plenty of cooking space, new microwave ovens, new, uh, new appliances and stuff like that. And actually a lovely garden on the outside. So um, let me show you around. Actually, we've got the breakout room here, which again is the last room we haven't furnished most of the bedrooms are furnished so this will have a couple of small sofas in um, possibly a little breakfast bar up there so this is kind of an extension of the communal space for the people in the property um, out to the rear of the property uh, i'm not going to go the key unfortunately but again nice breakout area nice gardens um, i'm sure you can flick on those incidentals as i'm talking let's go through um, and look at the rest of the house upstairs so into room one first now I don't remember how much you, I don't know how much you remember, I should say. This used to be a big lounge in the property. So we've essentially split it down the middle. We've created two good sized rooms out of it. Um, and ultimately this room is the one of the two that got the, the external balcony. So this particular property, um, you know, lovely big balcony space um, for this particular tenant to enjoy. Double balcony, so it might suit a smoker, wouldn't it? Or someone that likes a glass of wine out in the balcony in the mornings. So yeah, again, same MO, you've seen it all before. It's gray carpet up here in a multi-use uh, property other than the ground floor, we tend to go for laminate or a, a high quality uh, PVC or a lino or something like that. But lino kind of comes up cheap flooring. Actually, we go for really kind of high end, more a Candine style flooring downstairs. Um, all our normal built-in wardrobes, um, everything's the same. You know, you're probably thinking, what's the difference here to any other house? There's not, it, keep it simple, replicate it. Now this used to be a cupboard. So again, that was the entrance door to the lounge. If I can just swing you around there. This used to be the entrance to the lounge, it was one big room. This was just a cupboard. Now, I kind of figured what a great entrance to bedroom two. Um, we've knocked, a, knocked a, a wall through here and kept the cupboard door, um, which happened to be a fire door actually, which was really handy. And we created bedroom two out of that. So we've now got two good size bedrooms. Because we are, doing less en suites in this property. You know, these are clearly not big enough for an en suite as well. They're about sort of 13 square meters, I believe, off the top of my head, these two rooms, 12, 13 square meters, which is well, more than double the minimum space standards for an HMO. So we thought with this, you know, putting in a, a sink unit into this particular unit would just take a little bit of weight off the bathroom, people do their teeth in the morning and freshen up. So a nice little touch there, some nice little wall lights. There were existing lights here. There used to be a big fireplace in the lounge here, big granite fireplace. We had to cap off the gas 
get rid of that fireplace and we put some nice little modern wall lights on instead of some big gold horrible things all the fixtures and fittings on in this property were all gold they were hideous um, and if i can get you to pan up um there was horrible gold lighting and they've left these we've left these um you know interesting detailed cornices actually and found appropriately round uh, light fittings that kind of look like they're always meant to be there so we're sort of trying to update the property without spending too much money because getting rid of that and skimming the whole ceiling would have cost a fortune plonk a different light fitting on that's round kind of works well and again same thing we're putting the chrome fixtures and fittings across everything updating everything like that and it really does make a difference to the feel of the property so this is one of the other communal bathrooms in the property we've got the new one we created downstairs right off the entrance hall uh, that's a full shower room here's another full-on suite and again we've updated the flooring we've got rid of all the gold fixtures and fittings um, the one thing we haven't redone is the tiling because i think it's modern enough it's not ideal um, but i think it's modern enough you know you've got to strike a balance between updating and ripping everything out and starting from scratch because why spend that extra five ten grand when it's just pure profit you know these rooms are flying out the door like hotcakes and uh you just don't need to spend that level of money. So you've got to make a judgment call on what you update and how you update it. Um, so room three we're in now. This is an interesting one because it actually has a Jack and Jill, we've got a lock on here, a Jack and Jill door into that bathroom. So, you know, what the tenants will be able to do is make sure they lock both doors when they come into the toilet, clearly. Um, but ultimately this tenant does have access to it more often than not if they need to. So it's, it's not quite an ensuite, but you know, why not? Let's have a door through into it. Um, creates a little bit more amenity space. A lot of already inbuilt, you know, cupboard space in this property, which was fantastic. We've actually not put these in. You'll note on the ones where we have put them in, we do our normal mirrored doors. But again, I'm making a judgment call. I don't want to spend another thousand pounds or 500 pounds, whatever it is, on replacing that because it works perfectly fine. And this is a really big room. This is a nicer size room. Um, so yeah, again, judgment call. Didn't need to upgrade the wardrobe. It's already there. Nice saving. And turn this one around quicker. Get it income generating as quick as possible. Into room four. This was the old kind of, you know, little secondary lounge, I guess you would call it. It was quite a strange little room in the original house. Um, now it's a very nice sized double bedroom, um, you know, usual MO. We've got our built-in wardrobes, as you'll see, if I swing you chaps around, sorry to crouch you around, but we've got all the wardrobes in here. We've got a nice outlook out into the back garden and, uh, you know, the usual pictures, you know, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I think repetition is key here. Do find your own strategy, find your own design, know where to source all your products cheaply, and then replicate it across all your houses. We've done three of these, they all look identical. Um, and you know, that's a really good thing because we know it works, it's quick to develop, it means we can get going as quick as possible. Um, I can't go into room five because there's a tenant in there, but what we are gonna do as I'm talking, I want you to cut to these incidentals, chaps. Um, again, it's one of the smaller rooms in the property, but it is absolutely perfect. It's the first room that went incidentally. So this particular chap um, is a contractor, he's here in the week, he goes home to his family, and he actually wants one of the smaller, cheaper rooms because it suits his needs. What we find in a lot of these HMOs is you get a balance of tenants. You know, you get a, a, a range of demographics. So some people will live here permanently and two or three others you find in a larger property um, might only be there in the week and come back to their families for the weekends because they're contractors or on a part-time job or whatever. So into room six now. And as we go into room six, I'm gonna swing open the door for the bathroom on this top floor. So this bathroom, we've got the bathroom here, we've got the bathroom below it, remember, which had the Jack and Jill door, and we've got the one on the ground floor. So that's three shared bathrooms, and there's an ensuite in the last room, which I'll show you in a minute. So there's four bathrooms for six tenants, which is absolutely ample. So yeah, well proportioned, less ensuites than I would like to do in a property, but this was already laid out like this. This is the brilliance of it, you know. All we've had to do is tweak that, you know, downstairs, um, downstairs toilet into an extra shower room, and we've got the other bathrooms in here. The other ensuite was already in here. So all we've done with this place, painted, decorate it, split the lounge in two, and update all the fixtures and fittings. This is one of the cheapest conversions I've done, and I've got a potential to get seven bedrooms out of it, subject to planning on that seventh bedroom. So really, really pleased with one. We bought it probably the cheapest price per square foot out of all three of the sites we bought in, in, in Hampshire uh, before, since Christmas, sorry. So yeah, super pleased and can't wait to get it full of tenants, income generating, hand it off to my lettings team, and on we go do more deals. On to our KM conversion uh, in Hampshire, which will be probably 50 plus rooms and many, many more sites to come. So, you know, it's all about the numbers game, isn't it? You know, replicate it onward, do it again, put it, in put it into the place of your management team. We're building, you know, we've built a systematic approach to developing property, systematic approach to managing a letting property, extending our power team. I'm just gonna swing by you there, chaps, turn the lights on. 
Um, so this is actually the biggest room in the property. This is the one with the ensuite. So we felt we could afford you know, a few more luxuries in here. We're gonna put a little um, desk across this area to cover the fridge freezer. And because they're on the top floor, we thought why not give them a little mini fridge freezer up here, save them traveling down to the main lounge. Um, I'll show you, this was an existing wardrobe, so instead of getting rid of it, it was a horrible brown color. I'm not a fan of the handles, but at the end of the day, paint it great, it's usable, it's a big wardrobe. And in here we've got two sets of wardrobes, absolutely huge, um, you know, huge sets of wardrobes in here. Double, double wardrobe there, single wardrobe there, double wardrobe there. So kind of annoyingly, this would suit a couple. HMO regulations will only allow six people in the house as a, a C4 HMO. So actually, I'm gonna have to let this to a single person, be someone with a little bit more money, and we've priced this a little bit more expensive. It's about 30 quid more than in the next biggest ensuite room, effectively. So, you know, you get what you pay for. Um, into the ensuite, again, this was already existing. Um, we've left the shower doors. It's not ideal, but actually it's clean, it's white, it's unoffensive. We've, we've changed all the hardware um, and yeah, does the job, lovely en suite. I want to swing you guys around um, behind you actually and quickly show you the Jack and Jill balcony. So again here, nice little addition for this particular room. It's got a lovely little Jack, Jack and Jill balcony where I can go out and, you know, have a fag and, uh, you know, enjoy my open those doors, get a bit of fresh air into the room and uh, yeah, I guess a bit more space than normal. So I think I'm going to wrap it up there. That's seven rooms I've shown you, six of which we've got planning for. I've got potential eighth in that, in that garage conversion. So we can let this settle down as a six bed HMO for a few months, get it refinanced, pull out, pull hopefully all of our money or a good chunk of our money back out from the, the original purchase. Um, and then we'll be putting a planning app in for this one. I think, I think we're gonna try and go for another two rooms in here actually. So I think we can get eight out of this one, which is, which is amazing. Three stories, a bit more space. There's a really good town center location as well. Um, and then you know, the other property that we've shown you on one of the other videos, check back on that video on, on the channel and uh, that's gonna be a seven better subject to planning. And the first one was only five. It's just one of the smallest sites I've ever done, the first one of these three HMOs. So yeah, check back on the playlist, check back on the channel, three HMOs, five months, five months, three, five. Um, I've enjoyed the journey, I hope you have too. I hope you've learned a few tips and tricks. It's all fairly straightforward stuff, guys. The complications come in with the HMO regulations, some of the subtleties in the planning. But you know, once you've learned all that and you've got some good advice from people, um, you know, I'm happy to mentor you if you really, you know, if you would like some help um, with some of those details and those complications, how to source deals, how to work with agents, you know, how to refurbish these cheaply uh, and getting your head around all those regulations. Reach out to me um, at nicholaswarwick.com forward slash mentorship. Um, and on the flip side, if you're a hands-off investor and you want to invest alongside Redbrick, we give excellent rates of return and we'll go and develop these things for you and we'll run and manage them and return you a solid rate of return every single month. We've worked with a number of investors now. We've got a considerable amount of money on lend and we've never missed a single payment in over 10 years. I'm very proud to say that. So I hope you've enjoyed the whirlwind tour. Please subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon and follow our next site journey. All the best and see you soon.